Time for my daily exercises. Eh, eh, ow, oh my god. <laughs> Backflip a day keeps gravity away. Hi YouTube, welcome to Artists of Life, a channel for me to be myself and thrive in an environment where I can be myself and all that it entails. Today's topic of com <clears throat> Today's topic of conversation is spirit guides. Ooh. Spirit. Spirit. So I got a question from Not Koi. One moment. I got a question from Not Koi asking, are spiritual guides solely part of us or are they separate independent beings? My voice is really raspy right now. Is that like, uh, My voice. Can I, can, come back. Come back. I... So once again, the question is, are spirit guides solely a part of us or are they separate independent beings? So in my experience and the questions that I personally ask my guides, they're a little bit of both. But for starters, we can say that they are separate independent beings. And they're here to teach us things that are relevant to our current experiences and in ways that are respective to our current state of consciousness, our current belief systems. Now these guides, these non-physical entities, these beings, they're here to remind us more of who we are if we so choose to open that door for communication. And the communication will never be forceful, always by mutual agreement in a kind of higher self contract kind of way, you could say. Now like friends and people that we come across in our life, Guides come and go. And as life happens, people shift and move and transfer to different frequencies in our life. When we feel that we've learned all we can from the experience that we have with somebody, then we move on to different experiences. We shift frequency and find other people that resonate on our frequency. And guides kind of work the same way. All of us have many guides throughout our physical lifetime. It also depends on the guide too. I have guides that have been with me ever since I was young. And I also have guides that kind of come in and out of my life at different times, depending on what I'm currently going through, relevant to my current experiences, like I said before. They can be past loved ones, complete strangers, or completely different kinds of energy frequencies that we're not really familiar with but once again in a kind of higher self contract kind of way we attract what we put out the non-physical entities that we attract into our experiences we attract because somewhere in our own experience we are vibrating on that same frequency on that same resonance now whenever I interact with non-physical beings I always question everything I always interrogate them and set intentions which is very important with everything intentions is everything intentions is even before I start this video, I set my intention. This is a place for me to be myself and thrive in an environment where I can be myself. But that automatically sets the space. It sets the energy for the video, for the content that I will be sharing. Who we are in the spiritual realm is reflective of who we are in the physical realm and vice versa. Who we are in the physical is reflective of who we are in the spiritual. Intentions guide and set parameters to whatever we want to experience in our life Not just in the non-physical realm not in just the astral plane not in just the spiritual plane But even in our physical lives today to build upon this intention thing I want to share with you guys a few of my intentions with this channel That's so loud and intentions that I have set for myself in my exploration and consciousness that have helped me access and achieve knowledge that is resonant of my specific intention. I will be able to pay all my own bills, have and own my own car and house with my name on it. I will naturally and effortlessly create a community of individuals who are artists of life just by simply being myself and allowing my unique frequency and light to shine. I will show my parents and family that there's another way to experience this life by my own example. I will spread unconditional love and positivity throughout the world with my conscious message. I will educate and help as many people as possible with my own unique perspective, knowledge, and experience. In healing myself, I will heal the world. And in healing the world, I will heal myself. I will attain and confidently manage abundance in all forms. As wealth and material money is only an exchange of energy, health is wealth. I will grow and progress my spiritual awareness and consciousness so that I may bring my endeavors of the highest good to other realms and on a galactic scale. I will continue on my path of service, protection, and education to myself and others regardless of the fear of the unknown, the fear of the self. I will be brave, loving, kind, understanding, strong, adaptable, fluent, efficient, humbled, honest, genuine, sincere, and persistent regardless of the doubts, fears, and judgments of other people. Now those are 3D intentions for my physical life, the, the human life, you could say. Now here are my intentions for the spiritual realm that I have set for myself just to be an example for you guys to kind of here. 
I will safely have the courage to humbly develop my abilities and control them with ease and purpose, to help and conduct myself in the non-physical with the highest good and pure intentions. I will accelerate in my consciousness as I'm supposed to and take each new challenge with love, a steady calm mind and pure soul as I have been. I will only attract the beings that are of love and light. I will only be guided by these beings who are love and light. I will not be afraid to take risks and explore so that I may pave a safe path for others to walk down. I will be a great healer through different modalities. I will be a great protector. I will be a great educator. I will be a great explorer. My frequency and soul will not be tainted as I explore the wider consciousness system and reality. I will always be thankful and show my gratitude for the higher beings that aid me on my journeys, my guides that unconditionally love me, the ETs that wish to interact with me. I won't be afraid of new experiences, but instead excited for my growth and shift in consciousness. I will recognize that it is fun. I am ready to make galactic contact whenever it is most relevant for me and only with those of the highest vibration of pure intent relative to my own frequency. I will learn to utilize both dark and light energy for the highest good as they are both one. I will meet individuals in 3D and higher realms that will mentor me to develop my abilities in a positive and beneficial environment and guide me in directions of the highest good and pure intentions. I will have many masters and remain open to the universal knowledge that they are willing to share. I will combine my knowledge from different backgrounds to further constructively accelerate my spiritual growth and create my own unique skill set to aid myself and others in accordance with our highest self and pure heart. I will be, no, I am financially free to invest my time into all of my spiritual endeavors. And these are just examples of intentions that I have set throughout my life, not just in the non-physical realm, not just in exploring spirituality and consciousness, but also in my 3D life as well. In my perspective, intentions are what guide our manifestations. So when it comes to opening myself up for contact with a spiritual guide, I always set the intentions. Number one, please take the form of something friendly to my consciousness. Please do not look like the grudge. Look like something that is nice to me. And also I only open myself up to beings of the highest good and pure intentions. Here I must also give another disclaimer that before you connect to non-physical realms, have a good understanding of who you are in the physical first before you start exploring the non-physical. If there are any subconscious belief systems that you have that holds you back from exploring a wider consciousness system or any fear belief systems that you have, any judgments that you have on these experiences, then they will manifest directly into your experience. So before you start opening yourself up to wider consciousness realities, I highly recommend that it is a good idea for you to have broken down certain belief systems and judgments about this kind of knowledge. If you believe in demons and have a subconscious fear of encountering a demon, so you will manifest a demon. So you will manifest a depiction of that thought form of what you think a demon looks like, of what a demon will do to you. So before we start opening ourselves up to a wider consciousness system once again, it is a good idea to have deprogrammed our belief systems, to break down everything that we were taught from religion, from social and societal ways of thinking. It is a good idea to have moved more into your heart space before you start opening yourself up to a wider realm. Moving on, once I make contact with a guide, I only have two guides that I'm currently working with and that's Leto and The Prince. When I begin to make contact and feel an energy that isn't of my own frequency, I begin to ask questions to interrogate, you could say. Is this male or female energy? Is this energy resonant of my frequency? What's your name? What are you here to tell me? Why have you come? It's good to have a strong sense of discernment when working with these energies. And once again, it's very similar and reflective of the physical world. Most humans generally are empathic beings. We feel what other people feel. We can walk into a room and not even talk to anybody, not even know anybody. However, we can feel the energy of the room. We can tell if a fight happened. We can tell if it's a good energy. We can tell if it's an uncomfortable energy. We can tell, we can feel it. It's a matter of taking that sixth sense that all of us have and applying it into our experiences when we make contact. Now, in my perspective, I feel that most humans are generally empathically sensitive. We just generally don't use that term empathic a lot to describe our intuition. Do you trust your intuition? Ask yourself that question. Now, in further ways that I've connected to my guides is one, through channeling. So I've recorded myself, I've vlogged myself actually channeling uh, one of my guides. His name is The Prince from Shambhala. This is sacred. The best way to teach, Paris, you. Is by walking them through an experience. And I've also connected and communicated with my guides through my drawing, through my art, through my passions and my expressions. Now, a lot of the times that is actually how non-physical beings communicate with us. It's through our subconscious processes. Whenever we do something that we love to do, we are channeling our subconscious mind into the physical reality. We are channeling something that exists within us 
into a materialization form where we can then decode these messages that are being given to us from different dimensional planes of reality. It's not hard to connect. Once again, art is the key to the realm. Our creativity is the key to the realm. So the key is to basically re-kid yourself. As we were kids, we've experienced many things. We were open to a wider consciousness system already because we weren't indoctrinated with certain belief systems and certain ways of thinking that hold us back from being open to these kinds of experiences. When we were younger, we also might have seen something that scared us, which then led us to turn off our abilities, to turn off our connectivity. My guides have helped me throughout many difficult experiences throughout my life, and have given me insight as to what I should do moving forward from hardships and trial and error. Not too long ago, I tried to kill myself. I gave up, I ran away. I drove my car all the way to Cali, and I was just going to starve myself in a parking lot. But when I was in the trunk of my car, my sister came to me. My sister passed away when she was young, also from a heart condition. One of the things that I've always told myself in my life was I want to do the things that my sister didn't get to do. I want to live the life that my sister did not get to live. And in this moment of me giving up, my sister came to me in my car and said, what happened? What happened, Paris? What happened to living the life that I didn't get to live? You have much to give to others. And in my times of stress like that, these guides have been here to remind me and set me straight back on my path, the path that ultimately I create for myself. It's through working with my guides, I've finally brought myself up enough to share this information on this YouTube channel, to risk my social status of how people look at me or how people see me. Maybe I am just crazy, but why not believe in magic if it makes life just a little bit more interesting? At the end of the day, whatever works for you. And like I said in my how I got started in spirituality video, I've also learned how to utilize energy, utilize ancient Tibetan tools and gain different abilities that have helped me throughout my life and have helped me help others throughout my life as well. It's a fun little fantasy world, but why not believe in magic if it makes life just a little bit more interesting? And we cannot imagine anything that doesn't already exist on another plane of reality. Those of you who are new to my channel, well, it's kind of relatively everybody. I don't have too many people watching my videos, but that's okay. <laughs> Spirituality is what you make it to be. And this is only a story, simply sharing a perspective, speaking from my own experiences. And if you found this video, you found it for a reason. Somewhere in your higher consciousness, your higher self, you wanted to experience an awakening by hearing a story, by hearing a perspective. And so you have manifested it. I think all in this video here, I gave a lot of information. I just ramble and stuff. Love and light to all of you in your journeys. Peace out.